Darius Kerner is ready to hit the icy track. The 19-year-old bobsled pilot has to keep in shape. The German championships in the sport are just around the corner. The physics of what makes a bobsled go faster or slower are complicated. No one knows that better than Dr. Metin Tolan from the University of Dortmund. To understand how a bobsled moves down a mountain, you first have to consider all of the forces that act on it. Say this is a mountain, and this is the bobsled on its runners. A number of forces are affecting it. First, there's gravity, which is pulling it downward. But there are other forces that are acting against the force of gravity. There's the friction caused by the runners, normal, straightforward friction. And the second important force that acts against the pull of gravity is air resistance. Air resistance is dependent on how aerodynamic a bobsled is, and it's also the reason why a bobsled slides down a mountain faster when it's heavy than when it's light. This experiment illustrates why. The heavy ball obviously falls faster than a strip of paper. But that's only due to air resistance. We can prove that by pumping all the air out of a pipe. Then suddenly the paper and the ball fall at the same speed. But the members of a bobsled team are also athletes. In the end, there's no way around having to practice, practice, practice. The same is true of figure skating. To look this graceful, Nina Maria Knapp has to hit the ice at least five times a week. So are there any secrets or scientific insights that a pro needs to know? One basic principle is helpful. The reason that you can glide quickly over the ice is that it's always covered with a liquid layer that's just a few nanometers thick. You can't see it, it's too thin. But experiments have shown that this layer does exist, and the blade of your skate is able to glide on it. But to really score points in figure skating, you can't just glide elegantly over the ice. You also have to be able to spin. Professionals have to master many different kinds of pirouettes. What forces affect rotation on ice? The principle of the pirouette is based on the principle of conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum is the product of the moment of inertia and the rotation frequency of the skater. And it has to be constant both before the skater leaps and after the pirouette is completed. You can picture the moment of inertia before a leap like this. When the figure has its arms thrown out, then the inertia is high. That makes the frequency at which the skater is spinning low. But the moment of inertia is lower when the skater holds her arms close to her body. So she spins at a higher frequency. That's because the product of the two numbers has to be identical. A relatively simple principle, actually. But when it's carried out properly, the dry scientific principle describes a work of art.